Seamus Canadian Jeff Fuchs takes traveling off the beaten track to a higher level. The photojournalist and adventurer hiked 6,000 kilometers along an abandoned trade route through the Himalayas. His trek is the subject of his book, The Ancient Tea Horse Road, and Jeff joins us in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? Body all right? Uh, a little bit lean, a little gaunt, but uh, generally good. Did you lose any weight on this oh, trek? Oh, yeah. We lost... Uh, well, I wasn't the one who lost a lot of weight. We had a guy lose eight kilograms, um, and the butter tea doesn't help because it's a bowel cleanser. So uh, you do lose weight, and the altitudes tend to just sift it all off. Wow. Eight-month journey, 6,000 kilometers. Yeah. Okay, you did it because it had to be done. What was the motivation? It had to be done, and it's, apart from the Silk Road, it's the most important trade route through Asia. It linked Middle Asia. It linked the Middle East with the tea-growing regions of southern China. Outside of the cultures that live around it, it's a, it's a virtual unknown. And the other aspect was the last generation of traders who traded along the route are passing away as we speak. So it was important we got to these people, get their oral narratives, their histories, talk to them about the journey itself because it's a mystery to the West. What surprised you uh, because it's such a mystery to the West? What did you learn about them that we wouldn't know about them? Just the fact that narratives have kept alive histories in the mountains, particularly the Himalayas, for so long. Uh, and the extent of this route is incredible. I mean, two dozen, two dozen dialects, uh, over a dozen cultures. You have, you have unbelievable little vignettes of society that have not changed literally in centuries. Right. And you're walking into another timescape. So that's what surprised you the most. Yeah, I mean, I was expecting it, but it's still, it's still mind-boggling to walk into a village and see no wires, to see people functioning, as I imagine they did uh, centuries ago. And how did they greet you? Well, strangely enough, uh, you get the wide eyes and the, what is that guy doing walking in? But uh, other times, it's like I'd seen them weeks before. These people are very, very social. And a lot of the old traders had traveled to such an extent that nothing really phased them. They had a, a sort of a universal understanding of humanity. Did you encounter any particular hardships along the way? I, you know, I imagine it's not exactly like checking into a four-star hotel, so... Two weeks into our journey, our first snow pass, we had a, a blizzard hit us. It separated our team into two units. Four of us had to leave first, trying to get over this pass. The last member of the four of us actually got lodged in what we call an air tunnel, which is essentially a hole in the snow. We didn't realize he was missing until about 25 minutes after he was missing. So we hear a scream. Anyways, visibility is a meter. We truck back to find him. Had he not been wearing orange or yellow or bright color, right. he would have been finished because within 10 minutes the snow would have piled over his head. So. And there's, there's countless times like that that we encountered. Photojournalist is one thing, adventure is another. It's not exactly a description that everyone can attach to their name. This mm. is something you wanted to do from the time you were very little, I'm assuming. Yes, okay. I'm a climber, so this, this links in with, with the, the whole adventure aspect, but it also links in with culture. And more adventures and to more come, tea. no doubt. That's right. Okay, That's thanks right. so much for joining us. Thanks this morning for having and sharing me. your story. Thank you.